In reference to um, talking about government's role in a free society, you mentioned some of the market failures, and I think that you may have just passed. In reference to um, talking about in reference to um, talking about government's role in a free society, you mentioned some of the market failures, and I think that you may have just passed over one that is of utmost importance, and that is of poverty. And in prefacing my question, I'd like to refer to what President Kennedy said, that if a free society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are, who are rich. And to say that, well, we are a government of the people, and when there is a large sector of the people who are hurting, perhaps it is the responsibility of the, this government of the people to help out. Well, my question all, is... Yeah. My question is, is regarding how free are the poor, how free are the unemployed, and how free are those people who are disadvantaged? Right. And so in reference to that, right. what is government's role? Sure. First of all... I'm glad to see one vote for the poor. First of all, the government doesn't have any responsibility. People have responsibility. This building doesn't have responsibility. You and I have responsibility. People have responsibility. Second, the question is, how can we as people exercise our responsibility toward our fellow man most effectively? That's the problem. So far as poverty is concerned, there has never in history been a more effective machine for eliminating poverty than the free enterprise system and the free market. The period in... The period in which you had the greatest improvement in the lot of the ordinary man was the period of the 19th and early 20th century. Those of us in this room are the heirs of that. We benefited from the way in which our parents and our grandparents were able to come here. And by virtue of the freedom that was offered to them, were able to make a better life for themselves and ourselves, them and us. But next... If you look at the real problems of poverty and denial of freedom to people in this country, almost every single one of them is a result of government action and would be eliminated if you eliminated the bad government failures. Let me be precise and specific. Why do we have so high an unemployment rate among black teenagers? It's a disgrace and a scandal. Why do we have so high an unemployment rate? First of all, because we give them lousy schooling through governmental schools which make them unqualified to hold decent jobs. And second of all, we require employers to discriminate against them by not hiring them unless, they have, uh, unless their productivity is enough to justify a minimum wage. The minimum wage rate is the most anti-Negro law in the books. And it's an anti-Negro law because it precisely, having first not, not enabled the young blacks to have a decent schooling so that they can... They can have productivity, we next deny them the on to job training that they might get if you could induce employees. Which has been a machine for producing poor people. We have induced people to come under control of welfare. We've, I'm not blaming the people. Don't misunderstand me. It's our fault for constructing so perverse and so... Uh, families to break up. We encourage people to move from one part of the country and come to another, under which we have, in effect, made many people poor. How many of you have worked a 12-hour day and gotten paid 78 cents? <laughs> but let me go back to the... Because, but you know, that's all, all irrelevant. Is there one of you who is going to say that you don't want a doctor to treat you for cancer unless he himself has had cancer? <laughs> I could go down the line. But when all is said and done, while there are people in this country who are worse off than other people, by and large, the well, uh, the, even the poorest people in this country are relatively well off compared to the conditions in many other countries in the world. 
What we take as our standard of poverty, what we take as our standard of poverty, is above the average income of all of the people in the Soviet Union, let alone of the people in India or China or in other countries. Now, that doesn't mean we should be satisfied with it. We are a wealthier country, and we've been more productive. And we should set higher standards by ourselves. But by the same token, we ought to have a sense of proportion. And we ought to recognize both the source and the problem. I have just one more. This has to do with the, the Ford Pinto. I'm not sure if you're aware of the recent revelations that have, that have come out about the production of that car. Ford produced it knowing full well that in any rear-end collision, the gas tank would blow up because they had failed to install a $13 plastic block in front of the gas tank. And Ford estimated in an internal memo that that would cost about 200 lives a year. And they estimated further that the cost of each life would be $200,000. They multiplied and they found that the cost of installing those blocks in each of the cars would be more than the cost of saving those 200 lives. And over the past seven years, the car has been produced and over 1,000 lives have been lost. It seems to me that Ford did what would be the right thing according to your policy. And yet that seems to me to be very wrong. Well, let me ask you, let's suppose it would have cost a billion dollars per person. Should Ford have put them in nonetheless? You see, but you're really only, question you that. know that it you're really only arguing about price. The print, you're not arguing about principle. You're, no, no, no. Because you Principles cannot, nobody can take the principle. Nobody can accept the principle that, the, that an infinite value should be put on an individual life. Because in order to get the money involved, in order to get the resources involved, it's not money. In order to get the resources, they have to come from somewhere. And you want the policy which is maximizes the situation overall. You cannot accept the situation that a million people should starve in order to provide one person with a car that is completely safe. That's absolutely right. Right. Advantages and therefore, you're not arguing anything about principle. You're just, asking, you're just arguing whether Ford used $200,000 was the right number or not. No, I'm not arguing Suppose that it were $200 million. No, 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 no. Suppose it were $200 million. What should Ford have done? $200 million for what? Suppose it would have cost $200 million per life saved. Should Ford still have spent that $200 million? You mean per... That's not the question. That's not really the question. Yes, it is a question. Yes, that's the question. Yes, that's the principle of the question. That's the only principle involved. I don't know whether Ford did the right, came to the, the right answer is, or not. That's the, a question of whether these numbers are valid numbers for the relative costs of different things. You're not arguing about a principle if you once agree with me that Mr. if it had been $200 million, the cost per life save had been $200 million. You would not argue. Look, let me go back for a moment. Can I say something in response to that? If Ford had not been able to market those cars in the same kind of economic bracket because of the price of installing this one plastic block, that would be a different question. Maybe Ford could have considered redesigning the whole car so as to make it cheaper. But what we're talking about is balancing advantages and balancing of course, principles. And that's why you're Just a minute. You're only I'm a supporter of, of abortion. Therefore, I don't believe that every single human life is sacred. I believe the principles have to be balanced. And yet, I don't see Ford spending $13 less on each car at the cost of 200 lives a year as being a principled position to take, suppose and yet it I think been, your logic requires it. Suppose it had been it. one fewer life a year, so but, that the $13 per car, so that that one life, instead of being 200 times, what's 200 times, uh, 200,000, it's uh, uh, 40 million. Suppose it had been one life a year, so that it cost 40 million. Would it then have been okay for Ford not you to You can't predict that, that one life is going to be cost because of a physical defect in the car. This was a clear... I know, I know, I know, but this is, you're evading the question of principle. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm saying that they knew look, before look, they put the car look, out that there look, was a mechanical me. defect in it. You know when you buy a car, you know that your chance of being killed in a Pinto is greater than your chance of being killed in a Mack truck. No, I didn't. I didn't know that the gas tank would rupture. Of course it is a question. Well, Every one of us separately in this room could, at a cost, reduce his risk of dying tomorrow. You don't have to walk across the street. Of course. The question is, is he willing to pay for it? And the question here he should be raising, if he wants to raise a question of principle, the we, principle he have... should raise is whether Ford wasn't required 
to attach to this car the statement. We have made this car $13 cheaper, and therefore it is one, whatever the percent is, it is 1% more risky for you to buy it. But why now that, then he would be arguing a real question of principle. Because, why should they do that? that? Doesn't just, that interfere with the free enterprise no, system that you're touting? No, why not? Because the consumer should be free to decide what risk he wants to bear. If you want to pay $13 extra for that, know. you should be free to do it. But if you don't want to pay $13... Wait. Excuse me, we have to keep it to the audio over here. So then the government does have the right to require information of corporations, no, no. is that right? No, no, the government has a right to provide courts of law in which corporations that deliberately conceal material that is relevant can be sued for fraud and made to pay very heavy expenses. And that is a desirable part of the market, of course. What I'm trying to say to you is that these things are really a little bit more subtle and sophisticated then you are at first led to believe there are no, e you can't get easy answers along this line because your way of putting it really only doesn't really get at the fundamental principles involved. The real fundamental principle is that people individually should be free to decide how much they're willing to pay for uh, reducing the chances of their death. Now people mostly aren't willing to pay very much. I personally regard this as very, very illogical. I see people on all sides of me smoking. No, there's no doubt. Nobody denies that that increases their chance of death. I'm not saying they shouldn't be free to smoke. Don't misunderstand me. I just think they're fools to do it. <laughs> and, I, and I know they're fools because I quit on the basis of the evidence 18 years ago. <laughs> but that's the real issue. And if you want to be rate for it, you ought to be rated on those terms, not on the ground that you don't think they use the right numbers. Now look, I don't think we can keep on going very much. I'm afraid we're going to run out of tape, and I'm afraid I'm going to run out of voice. So I think I'll call it down. Thank you.